Sometimes it really is just a fish story is the tagline for a very fun short film called The Catch. It won Best New York Short in the Adirondack Film Festival in 2020. The writer and director of The Catch is an associate professor of communications at SUNY Cortland. Samuel Avery joins us now to talk about his short narrative film. Hello, Sam. Hello. How's everybody doing? We're doing great here, and your film is so wonderful. You've made this short film that is very big on entertainment value from beginning to end, really, with this fisherman finding $100 bills floating in the water. What inspired you to make this film? I think what inspired me the most was that my wife was due with her first child, um, our first child, I should say, at the end of August back in 2018. And so, you know, I had spent the entire summer with my buddy out fishing on the boat that's featured in the film. And I could kind of tell that perhaps that time of life was getting close to ending. And so me and my buddy who always been fishing, we started kind of concocting different ideas in terms of little short films we might make. Um, and I think the inspiration for the film really came from that kind of final deadline coming of the birth of my child and knowing that probably these long summer days out on the boat fishing with your friend or probably nearing to an end. So we wanted to uh, memorialize that somehow. And so we made this, this little film. Well, that is a nice way to memorialize that part of your life. What is your connection to the lake in the film? Sure, yeah, I actually live on that lake. Uh, so the lake is in Liverpool, New York, or Syracuse, New York. It's called Onondaga Lake. Um, and it's um, probably best known for being one of the most polluted lakes or was um, in New York State. It's not anymore. And um, while I don't go swimming in it, you know, my connection was that I would go out on that boat all the time and constantly, you know, just such a, a pleasant, peaceful place to go to hang out, fish, etc. And so it seemed like a perfect spot to shoot a film. Yeah. And how did you enjoy shooting the film on the lake? What was enjoyable about the process? Well, I don't know if I'd use the word joy. Um, you know, before we went out there, every you know, you have this vision that we're going to go out there, we're going to shoot this perfect film of a you know, of a boat on the water and blah blah blah. But you know, you kind of don't factor in all the all the weather and all the issues that come out of that. Especially a lot of the film is shot outside of the boat. So you know, there's the lead actor who's on the boat fishing, and then I was actually in a paddle boat, paddling around that boat, trying to get these exterior shots of it. You know, and even though the water was calm, you still float this way or that way or whatever. And so it became an incredibly challenging film to shoot. One of the major challenges we had too was the the dollar bills, right? So this idea that we were going to have, you know, money floating in a certain direction and the fishermen would follow it down the stream, um, you know, seemed really easy to write on paper. But then we got out there, we had this prop money, right? These fake uh, hundred dollar bills. And we put them in the water and the first thing they do is they sink right to the bottom. And so it was like, ah, oh, God, how do we get them to float? So we figured out finally how to get them to stay on top of the water. But then once that happened, I mean, those things floated all over the place. I mean, they were, you know, you'd want them to go one direction, they'd go that direction. It was the mess, just such a mess with these, uh, you know, $100 bills floating everywhere. I don't, you know, I mean, somebody downstream must have thought, you know, this is their lucky day because we've had to do it so many times. We must have put, I don't know, quite a few, hundred, probably hundreds of fake hundred dollar bills into the water. The only solution we could really come up with with the bills was to fold them a certain way so they stopped sinking in the water. Because that was the big thing we kept seeing was they were sinking. Um, and then in terms of getting them to float a certain direction, we, we kind of had to just keep, you know, putting a bunch of it in there. And then once they started to float the direction they were going, we would then try to reposition ourselves in a way um, that it seemed like it was planned that way because the water um, does not cooperate in any way, shape or form. Um, you know, so that was, it was pretty nerve wracking, but looking back on it, a lot of fun to talk about. And in the moment, it was kind of like, ah, this is never gonna work. We've, we've screwed up everything, <laughs> but it came together. Yeah, that might be why Spielberg did not want to shoot the sequel to Jaws. He was tired of working on the water. <laughs> it is challenging. Well, this film has a very distinctive voice in it. I woke up early that morning as I was known to do. I readied my supplies, found the perfect spot, placed my bait, and cast my line. How did you find the narrator? Yeah, it was it was a real challenge. I, you know, I put out a casting call for a variety of voiceover artists, and I listened to them, and it just wasn't coming together. And then finally, I remember that I worked with a man, an older man, uh, David Hollenbach, who used to have a career in radio and film. 
And the minute I heard his voice, it just clicked. It was the voice that I had heard in my head when I wrote the script. It, all the pieces came together. And truly for me, his voice is what makes the film. I think it's the best part of the whole of the whole package. I cast my line far and wide. Nice. <laughs> well, when I read the title of your film, The Catch, and knew it was about fishing, I wondered if this might be a film restricted to just people who enjoy fishing. Now, when I saw it, I realized that's not the case. It's appealing to a much wider audience than that. Yeah, absolutely. No, this film, you know, while I do enjoy fishing, I am certainly not a fisherman myself. And so this film, you know, it's, I think it appeals more to uh, trickery, right? When I hear the, when I think of the, the title, The Catch, um, you know, I'm, I think of it more as the kind of the switcheroo at the end, right? The trickery that I'm playing on the, the viewer um, you know, as they're watching it. So that's, you know, I don't, I don't typically consider it a, a fishing film, even though it's shot on the water and it's, and there's a fisherman included. Um, I, yeah, I, I definitely think it appeals to a much larger um, audience. And it's been awarded. The film won Best New York Short at the Adirondack Film Festival. What kind of honor is that for you? You know, that was a great honor. I have, I've been to the Adirondack Film Festival uh, multiple times now, and they do an amazing, amazing job. Um, and then, you know, to to learn that the catch ended up winning the Best New York Short Film Award this time around, I was kind of flabbergasted, disappointed that, um, you know, Adirondack Film Fest was virtual and they didn't get to throw their big party as they normally do, but still incredibly honored that uh, the catch was recognized among so many amazing films. And at this point, we're going to continue the conversation in another video because we're going to talk about the ending of the story. And I'd strongly recommend you see the film first before any more of the plot is spoiled. The conversation will continue with a link in the description below. And you'll be able to enjoy the entire short film, The Catch, during our upcoming show, Festival Films, Spotlight on New York Shorts. It's part of our Learning at Home programming for students and families. It airs Friday, April 2nd at 2 p.m. on Mountain Lake PBS. Spotlight is supported by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation, dedicated to improving the quality of life for year-round residents of the Adirondack Park.